guys, let's learn the last group of this particular chapter. This chapter you learn three groups. Group 18, group 1. One more to go, group 17. Group 17 is very interesting. I'll tell you why. Uh, and it's very tricky. So follow me closely. Uh. Same thing, don't drop down. Let me explain. I'll make sure you have time to copy later. Uh. So we are now in group 17. Uh. Group 17 has a nickname called Halogen. Halogen. Uh. When you see the word halogen, you know they're talking about group 17. Okay, first and foremost, for halogen, you must focus on the first, it is big special, four. Now you have to know the first four members in the group 70. You must know the first four members. Previously, it's first three members. Okay, quick recap. Group 18, what is it? Helium, neon, argon. Group 1, what is it? Lithium, sodium, potassium. Okay? So previously, we only need to know the first three fella in a group. But this one, you need to know the first four. Okay? So everyone, go for here. This is the name. This is the symbol. And this is the electron arrangement. So let's look at it. The first fella in group 17 is called fluorine. Symbol is an F. The second fuller is called chlorine. Chlorine, the symbol is Cl. The third member is called bromine. So bromine, the symbol is a Br. The last fuller is called iode. Iode symbol is I. Okay? So make sure you know the name and the symbol. Okay, now let's do it. So, Fluorine, the electro arrangement is 2. Now, common sense, huh? if you are in group 17, how many outer electrons do you need? 7. So it's 2, 7. Understand? So if you go for chlorine, you add one more circle 2, 8, and 7. Understand? If you go for another one more level, bromine is 2, 8. Are you see a whole number? 18 and 7. Okay? You don't need to know why it's 18. And I won't explain to you because explain also you won't understand. That serious things. I'm not look down on you. It's something very complicated, okay? It's something that I teach in form 6 and also A level. I feel that it's something very complicated. You don't need to know why it's 18, okay? I can show you a little bit here and there, lah, but you don't need to know in detail why it's 18, okay? I only need that one more circle. 2, 8, 18. One more. 18, 7, okay? So you should focus on how to write electroreaction. Why 18 not that important? Huh? Okay, I will show you some additional knowledge. Disclaimer, this is only extra knowledge. If you know, it's good. If you don't know, never mind. Look at here. Previously, back in chapter 2, I told you that in SPM, when you're talking about the shells, you focus on two magic number, 2 and 8. Am I right? I told you, first circle, only 2 to be full, second, third, fourth, and onward, you need to be 8 to be full. That's all. Yeah? Why? Because in SPM, we not go too deep so that it become very confusing. But in reality, it's not. In reality, you can go more than that. In reality, this is extra knowledge, huh? don't need to memorize. Huh? Okay. Actually, the maximum number of electrons can be determined using this. Huh? Maximum number of electrons can be calculated using a formula called 2 and squared. Okay? This is the formula for you to calculate the number of electrons in the shell. Everyone, if you have one shell, n equal to 1. When substitute n equal to 1, your maximum electron can accommodate 2. Make sense? That's what we learned. So if you have second shell when n equal to 2, 2 power 2, 4, 4 times 2, 8. So second shell can put 8. That's okay. Now if you have 3 shell, 3 power 2, 9, 9 times 2, 18. So actually, third circle can put 18. Actually can put 18. But for SPM, you only need to know 8. Understand? If you have 4 shell, 4 power to 16, 16 times 2, 32. Actually, the 4th circle can maximum put 32 electron. Understand? But again, if you know this thing, you will cry in your SPM. Here, that's why they sugarcoat with a nice thing, which is 2 and 8 only. I feel that this is extra knowledge. Just, if you know, it's fantastic. If you don't know, just ignore. Are you doing that? Yeah. So this is only extra knowledge. Okay. Now, let's go a bit more. Okay. 
Okay, guys, group 17 very special because they have very, very different color and appearance. Okay, everyone, look at here. For your information, uh, this is a florin. Florin appears as a yellow color and is a yes. Second color is chlorine. Chlorine appears as greenish yellow. It's a mixture between green and yellow. And chlorine is a gas. <coughs> the third color is called bromine. Bromine, the color now is brown. Some of the book they write reddish brown, which is okay lah, just write brown will do. Bromine now become a liquid already. Lastly, iodine. Iodine, the color is purple plus black, purplish, huh? okay, or you can just write purple black, okay? Purple or purplish black, solid. So can you see group 70 very special? Got gas, got liquid, got solid. Very different from previous one, everyone recap, okay? Group 18, if you remember, all normal gases are colorless gas. All group 1, all alkali metals are shiny grey color, solid grey. All of them are the same color one, but this is very different. Got gas, got liquid, got solid. You have everything and the color is so different. You got the idea? So that's what makes your group 70 a bit tricky. But you will be fine, just need some time. Okay guys, can you see a pattern here? Can you see a pattern when you go from top to bottom? Can you see some trend or pattern? The first thing, can you see gas slowly become liquid, become solid? Can you see the pattern? Yeah, okay. I want you to see the pattern. Huh? When you go from top to bottom, you slowly change from gas all the way to solid already. Okay, second thing. Guys, for the color, what are the trend or the pattern you can see for the color? Darker. The color become darker, right? Very good. So the color eventually become darker. Hey guys, why I ask you this thing man? Okay. Because you must, in this chapter, in your table, you must know something called trend and pattern. Because when you know trend and pattern, uh, you can use to predict something which you never learn or memorize. Example, uh, today, what if the question say, scientists discover a new fella, this new fella, the symbol is called, let's say, like, Z. Okay, for example, they, they say Z is below iodine. They say Z is below iodine. And the question asks you, Predict the physical appearance of Z. How you predict the physical appearance? Not very hard. Z is below the iodine. The color should be even darker, right? You already purple black. How to make it worse? Black. Understand? Black. And don't need to go so extreme with some people. Very black. No need to like here. Just black will do. Don't need to be so extreme. Very black. Very, very black. Don't do that. Here. So it's black, right? So the Z should be black. Okay guys, and you can see, from top to bottom, from gas to liquid to solid, go here, who you are, you think? Solid, right? You can't get worse, right? Already, because going down, change from gas slowly to solid. Here, already solid. You cannot become gas again, right? You cannot become liquid again. Of course, you are solid. You got an idea? That's why you all must know exactly what is the pattern. Because pattern can help you a lot in prediction. You got an idea? So today, if I ask you to predict, let's say, uh, there's a fellow called W. So if on W here, I ask you to predict, what is it? So I think you are gas, right? Yes. If you are yellow, this color should be lighter than yellow, maybe. Pale yellow, maybe. Understand? Pale yellow or some very light color. I hear that. Okay, so it's all about prediction. When you understand the concept, you can predict the whole thing easily. So far, so good? Okay, next thing, uh, is statement number one. Statement number two, okay? All right, halogen. Halogen always exists as magic word diatomic molecule. Guys, what is diatomic molecule? Okay, so this is side notes. Ah, uh. diatomic molecule is any molecule made by two atoms. Diatomic molecule come from the word di. Di stands for two. So diatomic molecule is the molecule that is actually made of two atoms. So if your molecule made by two atoms, you are diatomic molecule. I give you some example. First one, let's say oxygen O2, hydrogen H2, nitrogen N2. Understand? Everything comes two piece that is called diatomic. I give that. 
Alright? So, and here you must be very alert. You must be very careful. Huh? Why? You see, huh? when you come to this chapter, when you're in the chapter, when I use the word monoatomic, I'm actually trying to tell you that this is group 18. When I use the word diatomic, actually I'm trying to tell you this further is group 17. So by looking at the word monoatomic or diatomic, you already roughly know what they want. Okay? So please wash out the words, okay? Monoatomic means one piece. Who is it? 18. Diatomic means two piece. Who is it? 17. Understand? Okay, ah? Alright, now. All the halogen always exist as the diatomic molecule, okay? For example, okay? Your fluorine will appear as F2. <coughs> your chlorine will appear as Cl2. Your bromine appear as Br2. And your iodine will appear perfectly as I2. So what's good? Okay? I hope you understand what we are learning. So let's touch one more thing before I let you jot down. Okay? The next thing we have to know is this. Let's learn, let's look at some physical properties. Let's look at some physical properties of group 17. Uh, some of the physical properties. <coughs> so physical properties are all the properties which is observable. All those observable properties. Uh. Okay, now listen carefully. And you will see this thing very, very alike group 18. Okay, this thing. Uh, very alike group 18. Uh. This is very alike group 18. Shh. You get, guys. You can actually copy face group 18 one. You flip back to the notes of group 18, I will show you the almost photocopy one. You can flip back to group 18 and let me show you one. Number one, group 17, the, okay, do not conduct electricity. All halogen do not conduct electricity. What is the reason? The reason very simple, okay? Because group 17 is a non-metal. Okay, so no guys, 1 to 13 is metal, right? 14 to 80 is not metal. So group 70 is not metal, they couldn't conduct electricity, okay? So you are not metal. Okay? Second thing, okay? Second thing. Group 17, okay? Group 17 has a very, very low boiling point. Group 17 has a very low boiling point. And this is very important. Can we put three stars here? Very important. They always ask to love up. They always love to ask you something about boiling point. And guys, I have taught you something on this before. I hope you still remember. Okay, guys, why group 17 has a low boiling point? I mentioned this last week and the week before that. By me saying that. Every time when we want to talk about melting and boiling point, your answer must talk about the force of attraction and the heat. Understand? You must tell people the force and the heat. Why? When you want to melt something, you need to break the bonds. You need to overcome the force of attraction. So it depends on how strong the force. If the force is very strong, you need many, many heat to break them. Understand? Which result in super high melting and boiling point. So far, okay? So far, in this particular chapter, your melting boiling point only got two possibilities. In this chapter, uh, when you want to talk about melting or boiling point, you only have two possibilities. The first one is that metallic bond. Okay? The first of the force to be broken is metallic bond. The second bond or the force to be broken is called Van der Waals. You can call Van der Waals force. Van der Waals force also known as intermolecular force. And please be very careful when to use. You use metallic bond if you want to melt or boil a metal. You use Van der Waals force when you want to melt or boil a non-metal okay so far so good all right so guys so today if we want to melt or boil the group 17 further make a wild guess what are the force to be overcome when the was because group 17 is not metal are you that one to thirteen is metal 14 to 18 is not metal are you that let me write here okay if you are group 1 to 13, you are metal. If you are group 14 to 18, you are non-metal. That's it, okay? So, 
Group 70 is non metal, so the force to be overcome is Brenda Walls. And you all know this, this is the third time I draw already. Draw the stick man. So, this is the halogen stick man holding their hand together. This is another halogen holding their hand together. Okay? So, this is the force to be overcome when you want to melt or boil. This force is called Van der Waals forces. Okay? So, Van der Waals forces is strong or weak. Look at here. When you have low boiling point, it has to be weak. Understand? So, how you write it out? Just need to mention that. Huh? Okay? I just need to mention halogen is actually attracted by some of the weak when the walls forces when you attracted by weak when the walls force or so called intermolecular force so what okay only very little heat you only need very little heat you need the heat for what very little heat needed to overcome the force of attraction you only need very little heat to overcome the force of attraction so this is what you know so far so good okay actually you should feel a bit familiar already if you realize that it is quite a light group 18 actually okay why uh, group 18 is no metal they are also no metal so you can see some properties are overlapping one here learn smart don't memorize everything blindly <laughs> you try to see something in common you see that okay turn up okay So make sure you all know physical properties will change a little bit when you're going down the road. And you learned this before. It is very, very alike group 18. Huh? So come, let's do it. First furler is called fluorine, which is 27. The second furler is called fluorine, which is 287. Third furler is called bromine, which is 2887. The last furler is called iodine, which is 281887. So, from moving down the group from top to the bottom, okay, nothing to shout about, I think it's quite easy. Okay, from top to the bottom, uh, when you go and moving, when you're moving down the group, okay, when you're moving down the group, there are some of the properties change. Number one, you will realize that the atomic size increases. Atomic size increases. This is the third time you heard it, okay? Alright? So, this is the third time, so you don't give me a face of, First time, no, this is third time already. Okay, the reason everyone know going down the group, we have more and more shells, right? Three, uh, two shells, three shells, four shells, and five shells. Okay, so going down the group, you have more and more shells occupied with electron. When you have more and more shells filled up with electron, that's why the size are getting larger. Same thing, going down the group, the density, the density will increase. Okay, it will become denser, density increases. Why? Same thing, we learn for third time again. Density is mass over volume, okay? Going down the group, when the size becomes larger, they become very heavy. So the mass increases faster than the volume. The mass increases faster than the volume. That's why the density is increases. Last one, which is the most important thing, the melting and boiling point. Going down the group, what happened to the boiling point? 
So going down the group, the boiling point actually increases. Okay? So why? So look at here, this is the start. So this is something we learned before, just like our group seven, uh, group uh, seven, uh, 18. Going down the group, the size become larger. You saw this diagram before. So this is the first color called fluorine. So this is fluorine. So they hold their hand together. So when they go in down the group, let's say become iodine. So iodine become much larger. Okay, iodine is larger compared to the fluorine. So this is iodine, and this is iodine. So when iodine become larger, so the force of attraction become much more stronger. Are you doing that? Remember, melting boiling point always increases except group one. Group one is a bit weird. That's why I call it, you know, a weird metal. Are you doing that? Group one a bit the body, eh? the rest is all the same. Okay, now how to write it out? So going down the group, what you realize? The, the size of atom increases when you moving down the group. When you go from top to the bottom, the size of atom increases. Okay, atomic size increases. When the size of atom become larger and larger, when atom become larger, when they grow up, they become stronger. Again, what is the force? This is halogen, halogen is group 17. Group 17 is no metal when the walls. Okay? Right, so your van the walls force. When the walls force eventually become stronger. Why? You grow up. When you grow up, you become stronger. So when, when the walls force become stronger, how much heat you need? More. Okay, you need more. Huh? More and more heat is required. You need more and more heat required, or you can say needed. You need the heat for what? To overcome the force of attraction. Again, guys, don't memorize blindly only. Try to find some common thing as similarity. If you realize this thing quite a light group 18. If you alike, if, if you really remember, if you really can tolerate group 17 properties very alike group 18. Why? They are all non-metals. I give that. Actually, if you look at the notes, it's almost the same. Quite similar. Okay? Alright? So this is statement number four. Let's learn the statement number five, which is our last statement for today. Yeah? So now we will learn the last thing for today lesson. Okay? Okay, this is the last statement, statement number five. In okay, statement number five, let's learn about something called reactivity. Let's learn something called reactivity of group 17. Okay, let me teach you some common sense first. Then, I will show you some things, okay? Guys, recall back, we all learned before. What is the ultimate objective for a chemical substance to react? They want to be? Stable. Always remember this, okay? You react because you want to be stable. Simple as that. What it means by stable in the chemistry perspective? Outer shell, fully occupied, okay? Octet and you, you black, huh? make sure you know that. Huh? Good. Now I throw a few questions to you. You think about it and you answer me, then we do together to finish it, okay? We need five more minutes. Okay, everyone, I take a random group 70 further. Let's discuss together. Let's say I have a further called chlorine. Huh? Chlorine has 287. Chlorine has seven outer electrons. My question number one, is chlorine stable? Not yet, right? Okay, second question. If chlorine want to achieve stability, you think what is the easiest way? Receive one more, turn on. Because if you want to throw, you have to throw seven, which is very hard, understand? You will receive one more, fantastic. Okay, so what is the moral of story? What I'm trying to tell you here, guys, actually reactivity for group 70, I teach you a simple tips. Everything of group one that you learn, you just invert it. You just the ballet, you just inverse the group one. Okay? You just inverse all the group one properties. What it means by inverse group one properties? Okay, I'll write in the shower no worry. Group 1, they will be stable by throwing electron. Group 17, they will be stable by taking electron. 
Group 1, going down the group becomes more and more reactive. Group 17, going down the group becomes less and less reactive. You get an idea? That's the tips. You just go for group 1 and you reverse the whole thing. It's easy. Understand? And now I prove to you why. Huh? <coughs> Let me prove to you. These tips can help you a lot. You don't need to memorize so many things. I memorize group 1 and everything reverse it. I get group 17. Okay, come. Let me show you. Huh? Okay. All halogens. All halogen they have seven valence electron. So when they have seven valence electron, okay, they are not stable. Okay, seven outer electron is not stable. So what they do, okay, halogens, they will prefer to, okay, you are right, guys. Just like hear that, receiver. Uh, they can receive, or you can write the word gain. You can write the word accept. Okay, they can receive gain or accept one valence electron. Okay, they can receive gain okay, or accept one valence electron in order to be stable. Okay, to be stable. Okay, good job. So now group 17, reactivity depends on how easy to take. Understand? Group 1, how reactive depends on how easy to throw. Group 17 depends on how easy to take. Okay, so the more easily the more easily for you to receive electron the more reactive it is okay the more reactive it is so this is what you need to know okay group one one to throw group 17 one to take that's it so how to know who is more or harder to receive electron follow me this is fluorine fluorine is two and for example uh, Fluorine is 2 and 7. This is another fuller. Let's go for the extreme one. Let's say this fuller is iodine. 2, 8, 18, 18, and 7. So if you compare, quite simple. Fluorine only got 2 circles, but iodine got 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 circles. Okay? You can see in contrast, right? Okay, now, this fluorine got 7 outer electrons. Probably got seven outer electron. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the iodine also got seven outer electron. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Both of them, they want to be stable, they need to pull one electron. So this is the additional electron to be pulled inside. Okay, this is the additional electron to be pulled inside. Because you want to pull this electron inside so you can have eight. Understand? Electron pulled by who? Nucleus. Understand? Electron pulled by nucleus. So quite simple. In this case, you only have two shells, you only have two circles, you are quite close to the nucleus. This pulling force is pretty strong. Okay? Vice versa. This further got five shells, right? Five circles. The electron is far off from the nucleus. If you are far away from nucleus, the pulling force is weaker. Understand? So going down the group, you have a weaker pulling force. It is very hard to pull in the electron. The harder it is to accept electron, the less reactive it's going to be. Understand? Let me write it and you finish. Okay? That's how we do it. Okay. Moving down your group 17. The size of atom increases. When atom increases, what happens? The valence electron, okay, the valence electron is actually further away from nucleus. So the valence electron getting far away from nucleus. When you get far from nucleus, your attractive force is weaker. A okay, force of attraction, force of attraction between the nucleus as well as the valence electron become weaker. So when the force becomes weaker, it is very, very hard to receive electron. It becomes harder for me to receive electron. So you can say receive or you can say pull. You can say attract. It becomes harder to attract electron. When it becomes harder and harder to attract electron, so the reactivity is actually decreases. You become less and less reactive. So far, so good. Guys, a, a very helpful tip is that group one reverse. Okay? 
if you can see there are so many so many similarity like group one okay it's just reverse okay group one going down the group more and more shells electron far and far away from nucleus it's just that when the force of attraction become weaker it is good for throw but it is bad for take understand that's what you need to know okay finish okay next week we will learn some chemical properties of group 70 okay what kind of reaction group 70 can do and next week i also teach you period number three then we finish with each other okay